talk all about interiors with interviews with interior stylists, writers and the big names in interiors, from brands and PRs to artists and designers. I also catch up with industry experts in the know and get them to share all their knowledge and advice. There's so much to talk about. I'm your host, Emma Morton-Turner, an interior stylist and a writer with a ton of experience. I set up InsideStylist.com so I could share all that interiors love with you. So don't forget to head on over to the website for not only the show notes from today's episode, but for links to interior stylists, writers and assistants profiles and a ton of inspiration. But for now, enjoy the show. Hello, it's just me today and we're going to be talking all about how to get set up for your very first photo shoot. So photo shoots are something I've been doing for 20 years, more than 20 years, and it's one of those things I do so naturally now, I forget how daunting it can be to do a shoot for your very first time. Now this came about because I have been asked by a number of brands coming out of lockdown who want to do more professional shoots. They don't want Danny from accounts taking pictures in the the little room out the back. They want to do proper shoots with stylists, with beautiful settings, with lovely backdrops, and they want the lighting to be right. And in order to do that, you need to do a proper shoot. So I've had conversations with brands. I've also had conversations with branding experts who have been doing packaging and designs for, for new products. And then they want to shoot the products and they just don't know where to start. So I thought, I'm probably in a very good position to share that information with you. So here at Inside Stylist, there are three main ways we can help you with this. The first is we have profiles for interior stylists, writers and assistants. So if you want to just go to insidestylist.com, um, if you look at members, you'll be able to see all the stylists' profiles. You can look at their contact details, their um, samples of their portfolios. You can see the kind of style that, of work that they do and you can get in touch with them directly. You can also use the Insider Studio. The link to that will be in the show notes. Um, the Insider Studio set was set up during COVID where we really didn't want to be kind of gathering up great big teams to do shoots we wanted to keep it as small as possible and interior stylists who have quite a bit of experience tend to have what I call I have a work husband I have a photographer that I work with quite a lot and we kind of just shoot in each other's houses and during covid I was pulled together people that could do that for brands so if you have a shoot that you want to pull together and you find a stylist you can see if that stylist will work with a photographer um basically in their homes that means you don't have to hire a location. Now we do have locations on Inside Stylist and a lot of shoots do require it. But if you've got smaller items that just need kitchen tables or a mantelpiece, then we can probably help with that. Um, the link, as I said, is in the show notes. And if you're listening to this on like iTunes, it will be in the details there. If you just look in the show notes on your phone. But if you need help with that, I can help. And the other thing we can do is if you have something specific you want to get shot and you want someone with specific experience just drop me a line and I can put a request out for anybody who is in Wales or Wiltshire or has experience doing underwater products or deep flower meadows anything that you need we will be able to find someone who can help you um, so that's how we help here at Inside Stylist but let's get down to what you really need to know in order to set up your very first shoot so the first thing you need to do is think about exactly what it is that you want to shoot so you've got tons of products you need to think right how many of these can I reasonably get in a day you probably can get if you're changing the setup you can probably get 10 12 good shots maybe with a few variations on it it really does depend on what the product is, but you aren't going to be able to shoot 100 individual photos in one day. It takes quite a long time to get the photography, um, kind of the photographer in the right place. And also the lighting. If you're moving everything around, you have to make sure everything is in the right position. You have to move everything out of the way. You have to style it all. And it's a slower process than you might think. It's not like turning up to a wedding and having a wedding photographer go around snapping loads of pictures. It's slower. The cameras are much higher end. It does completely change how you shoot. So you need to be specific about what you want to shoot. From there, you need to think about how the shots need to look. You need to consider the shots. Do you want one image that can be used editorially on social media on your website? With that, if you were doing it, so let's, let's have an example. If you were shooting a table full of beautiful china that you've just released, 
you might want to do a portrait shot that could be featured in a magazine. Traditionally, portrait shots are how magazine stylists will set up a shot. We always start from a portrait. But if you want to then use that image for, say, Instagram, you want to be able to crop it into a square. Very easy to do usually. You just have to make sure that you're allocating which part of the image you would crop out. If you then want to use it for a banner for a website, it's a completely different thing and you need to set up the, the shot and style it completely differently. So in that one setup, you have three different looks and three different measurements of shots. So it's really good idea to know exactly what you want from each shot, where you're going to be using it and the measurements. Say you might want to use specific measurements for your website that are different. They might not be perfectly square like they do on Instagram. You might not think I need to do portrait shots, but from someone who's pulled together lots of features for magazines and, and for Inside Stylist blog posts, it's really hard to use images that are landscape, not portrait. So there's a tip. Always make sure you've got a portrait shot in there that can be cropped to square so you can use it like that. And if you want a landscape shot, because sometimes shots do need to be landscape, no matter what you do, it, it's the feel of it is landscape. But just keep in mind exactly what it is you want each shot to be. What is it for? So the next thing you need to do is hire a stylist for your shoot. And this can be game changing because what we are trained to do, and it takes two to three years of assisting before you go out and do your own shoots because you aren't just learning how to pull things together. What you're learning is when you look through the camera, what works and what doesn't work? What do you need to remove? What do you need to add? Do you need a greater depth of field? Where is the lighting coming from? Have you positioned yourself in the right way? That is all taken into consideration almost automatically now. Once you're, you've are you been doing it for a while, you know where you need to stand. You know where the photographer needs to be to get the right shot. But what we do is we make your product the hero in the shot. And that is the difference between a, having a stylist and not having a stylist. We're trained to make sure that the whole shoot works. Once a stylist is um, given a, a shoot brief on exactly what products you're shooting and how you want them to look, we will go away and do mood boards and concept boards. We can create sketches for you so you can see exactly what it is that you're going to get from the shots. We get get all the props that make those products look amazing. We make sure we've got assistants, set builders, couriers. We just organize all the logistics and we are the ones that make the shoot run really smoothly. And there are lots of benefits to having a stylist overdoing it yourself. Okay, so once you've got your stylist, you need to think about your photographer. Now, like I said, we have work husbands, we have work wives, we have people we've worked with very, very closely for many years. And it's really important for a stylist and a photographer to work well together because I have shot so many times with, with probably three or four photographers and I know that if I go with one of them, they'll say, I didn't see a shot from this angle, I thought of it over here. And I can see where they're coming from. And actually that is really gold dust. When you've got a photographer and stylist who work together, you get an enhanced shoot and the product will only ever come out much, much better. If you have someone in mind, we have worked with many photographers. We've all worked with a lot. We're very experienced and we can literally work with anyone for the first time. It's never going to be a problem. But if you are hiring a stylist first, you can always ask them for recommendations. And what, what I always do is give a list of maybe three or four photographers who I've really enjoyed working with, whose lighting is just brilliant and makes the shots look beautiful and then I share the links to their website and then you can find them have a look see if their work is um, see which one is you feel is working best for you which one is on brand for you so you've got your photographer you've got your stylist next you need to think about where you're going to shoot now a lot of people when they're shooting for the first time want to do it in the um, maybe the business's owner's house or a location within the building. Maybe there's an office room that you can use as a little studio. What you need to remember is you need to have good light, you need to have good surfaces and good backdrops, or you need to be able to bring them in. And if there isn't enough space, the shoot's gonna be very small. All the shots gonna be shot very tight in. So if that's gonna be the case, if you're not using the inside the studio where you're using photographers and stylists homes that are set up for beautiful shots because we all have beautiful homes of course you will need to hire a location a shoot location now we do have shoot locations on inside stylist that is growing so it's always worth going and checking there if you have a very specific look for example right now i'm looking for a log cabin for a christmas shoot i know exactly how it needs to look i don't want anything that's like piney orangey wood it has to be very much like tree trunks 
I need to find something like that. Now, I know where to look and stylists in general know a lot of locations. They know a lot of agencies and they know where to start and they can send you recommendations the same as they send you recommendations for photographers. I will put a link through to the Inside Stylists locations in the show notes too, so you can go and have a little look. We've got some beauties on there. Okay, next you need to think about what is your prop budget. All shoots have a need for expenses. You will probably need some form of food, flowers, you might need a specific surface, you might need a backdrop, you might need to buy paint. All those little things you need to really think about. Now, you can't just pluck a number out of thin air. You need to know exactly what it is that you need to buy additionally to what you already have. You might have surfaces that you've already used um, previously. Stylists might have some things they can bring along and they'll charge a minimal fee for that. But if you need to get something more, so say you're doing a shoot and you need to hire a table and chairs from a prop house, you need to have budgets put in place for that. So stylists will send an advance once you agree what that prop budget is. Now, if you have no idea, you can always ask them to list out what they think it will be. So say you need to find £1,000 for props. The stylist will invoice you ahead of time so that you have that props budget in the bank before they start buying anything. If you hire from a prop house, Um, like a proper hire place, you will need to pay for those because the way it works is you need to be responsible for the products that are being hired under your shoot. I should also add that if you hire things from a prop house, you will need to hire them for a week. And if you are shooting for a week, you need to make sure that they go back on the seventh day because if they go back on the eighth day, well, the props are returned, you'll get charged for an additional week. Okay. Once you know what your props are and where you're getting them from, you have to get them from A to B. So we use a lot of fabulous couriers who are not just your regular couriers, you know, dropping off deliveries. They are dropping off shoot props and they do understand that normally you will want a a company that will have two people turning up. So you don't have to lift and carry anything. Everything's very safe. They have straps to make sure nothing rattles around in the back of the van and they have blankets to protect things. They're really experienced and um, we can recommend people for you. We Again, it's it's all experience and who you know. It's such a small network of people who work within this industry that we can recommend people who are really good and will turn up with a smile, which a lot of couriers don't. So who is going to be in the shots? Do you need people in the shots? I have come across, um, this happened very recently. I got asked about um, doing a shoot and they've never done it before. And they wanted children in the shots. Now, I have worked quite a lot with children. I quite like working with children for about the first 10 minutes. No, not really. Um, I've worked with people's kids, which people always think, oh, Jimmy's got a beautiful little girl. Let's just get her in and we'll plonk her in the shot and we'll take pictures and it will look beautiful. There is a world of difference between Jimmy's little girl and a model. Models are paid. They are professional even kid models have got experience. They know what to do. They're, they're kind of, they're used to the setup. They're not worried about being in front of loads of people all staring at them, sitting at a table. Every now and again, you'll get a great kid. But if you hire professional models, the difference is huge. Kids that have experienced shoots and do this for a living are just so much easier to work with they will smile for hours on end you don't have to bribe them they literally you can literally say turn it on and they do and I mean I've seen kids act like these two a man and a woman is their real parents in a photo shoot you would not believe they weren't her real parents because she just knew how to do it and I think she was six just a beautiful girl it it is just not worth using your friend's kids because it it just isn't going to work as well. And it, it's a waste of time and money. You're going to end up spending tons of time setting up this shoot and not getting any shots with people in at all because they're just, they're just not going to work. You get a kid who doesn't smile, it ruins the shot. Okay, let's move on. Another question that I get asked all the time is what is a shoot going to cost? Um, it is almost impossible to put a price on that. I mean, in a ballpark figure, if you're using a location, you're looking at at least a few thousand pounds a day. But what you're getting for that is pure branding. Every every shot is your brand. Every shot looks exactly how you want your customers to feel. You want those shots to look absolutely spectacular and just the, the product just jumps off the page into their pocket. They just love it. That is what you're paying for. 
And it's really important to remember that because it's very easy to get people to share your product on their maybe social media feeds, but that's their branding. That's not your branding. So it's really important to remember that if you want your brand to be coherent and consistent, you need to be in control of what your shots look like. And that is what a stylist can do. So that is it in a nutshell. I'm keeping it really short today, but just because I've been asked so many times and I was chatting to a stylist friend who had exactly the same experience, I thought, let's just share it. Let's get that, let's get that out there so that you can always listen and understand how shoots work. If I haven't covered anything and you would like to know more, then by all means, come and um, drop a, drop a message, come and contact us. We have got the Insider Studio open all the time now. We set it up during COVID, but it's continuing. I've had lots of people collaborating within Inside Stylus, so it could be really beneficial for you to um, to get in touch and we can help you with your shoot. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks very much for stopping by and I hope this has been super useful. Thanks for listening to the Inside Stylus podcast. You can find all the details from today's episode over in the show notes on insidestylus.com. If you enjoyed the show, I'd love it if you would head on over to iTunes and rate and review it. It's the best way to help other people find the show and I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, bye for now.